Within trigonometry, we're not limited to just our simple understanding of SOHCAHTOA. Even though our sine ratio, our cosine ratio, and our tangent ratios are extremely important, we also have to learn what are known as the cosine law and the sine law. As well, taking it further over into what's known as the ambiguous case. Now, the ambiguous case is kind of a shoot off of the sine law, but we'll be doing that in its own section. One thing that you do need to know though, well, you don't actually need to know it, but there is also a tangent law. It's just not done in our grade 11 studies. It could possibly be done at a higher level of education, but we're not doing it right here. So we have a few indicators. It is very similar to our pre-calc unit, for those of you that have done pre-calc, but it has a bigger emphasis that we're not generating the proof just like we had done before, but we do have to understand what the steps are for those proofs are. And we'll actually be doing that. Now we have a nice rubric. I talked about how we can actually achieve mastery of this outcome, being I can explain steps, I can illustrate it with possible examples, I can do my ambiguous case, I can form an analysis. But before we get all to our sine and cosine law, we are absolutely going to go back to just our right triangles. We are going to go back to using the Pythagorean theorem and our sine, cosine, and tangent ratios, sometimes known as circuxetics, but that's how it's, it can be sometimes done. <laughs> uh, of course, when we talk about solving any kind of triangle, we talk about finding everything. So we want to find out this triangle. We're going to find every single relevant measure to the nearest tenth. We're going to find out every single information, which means we're going to solve for what is this? What is this? And what is that? We're going to solve for each side, each angle. So that does mean that we have to apply our understanding from previous years. For example, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find out our red side. The good news is that you've been working with it since grade eight. Our C squared being our long side. Our unknown side can be our A or our B. It doesn't really matter. We can also invert this to be A squared plus B squared equals C squared. it all works out. So simple calculations. Of course, I do take for granted that you know how to use Pyth your Pythagorean theorem. You are not fully comfortable with it. Ask, and you will be given something to help work on it. But as I said before, it is something that you've been doing for probably the past three years. So we do our manipulation, get our 400 over to get the A by itself. Now we're going to have to do some square rooting, which means that A is going to be 15. We don't have any units. We can just leave it as 15. Though if you want to be completely clear, you would use the a U U, a U U, the unit U to indicate you have so many units. Now, if we want to solve for other things, for example, if we want to solve for this angle, we want to look at what sides do we have? And then we have to make a relation to our sine, cosine, and tangent ratios. So in relation to our angle, this one is for sure our hypotenuse. This one would therefore be our opposite. This one would be the adjacent. Well, the only ratio that uses the adjacent and the hypotenuse is our cosine ratio. So the cosine of our angle does equal our adjacent side divided by our hypotenuse. In order to get our angle by itself, we do have to cosine inverse both sides. I do expect that you're showing your work.
you can potentially get away with not writing this specific step, but showing that you are actually taking the cosine inverse is going to be a necessity. If you don't do it, I don't really give full marks for it. If you just go from here, just the green without having that black in there, without actually taking the cosine inverse, and you just get to 36.9 degrees, please include your unit. You just show this and this, oh, you're not going to get full marks. You're just going to say, oh, yeah, I looked off my friend. I know what I'm doing. Like, no, no, you looked off your friends. Now I'll show you this uh, blue question mark two different ways. For example, in relation to this angle, well, our hypotenuse stays the same. It's still going to be our hypotenuse. But the, the side that we're actually given in relation to our angle is our opposite. When we're, all, when we're solving for any kind of information, we want to use what is actually given unless absolutely necessary. We want to use the given information as opposed to the calculated 15, because who knows, we might not have calculated the 15 first, we might have calculated our angle first. Even though this one does work out perfectly, there may be cases where it might be 15.163596356212397. Well, you're not gonna type all of that into your calculator. So let's make sure we use as much information that's already given as absolutely possible. So our ratio that uses our opposite and our hypotenuse is our sine ratio. So our sine ratio of our opposite side, which is 20, over the hypotenuse. And then we have to take the sine inverse of both sides. What that sine inverse does is it just cancels off the sine. Just like the cosine inverse just cancels off the cosine, leaving us with just that B angle. So if we find the sine inverse of 20 over 25, it should come out to be approximately 53.1. Yes. Now this is obviously the long way. At the same time, we are also able to use the simple fact that all the degrees in a triangle add up to be 180. So if I know that all of these three angles add up to be 180, and I subtract off my 90 degree angle and I subtract off my 36.9 degree angle, I still get 53.1. It's the last thing that is to be calculated. Sometimes you can get away with it. Sometimes it's going to be more beneficial to go the long way. If you're ever unsure, check both ways. So our next example gives us a few more information or a bit more things. Uh, for example, we have this C side is 10. We don't know what our A is. We don't know what that angle is. We don't know what that B is. Well, we're going to solve for some information. Obviously, I can solve for B very quickly just using that same information. We're given information. We're given that this is a 90 degree angle. This is a 36 degree angle. So if we take our 180 and subtract the 90 and subtract the 36. All right, just make sure. Sometimes my brain's not fully working, but yes, it's 54 degrees. Now, obviously, that's a calculated angle. We're not going to. We're going to do our best not to use that calculated angle, which means we're going to use the 36 to so solve for A and solve for B. So, let's go. I'll say blue is A and red is B. So, in relation to our angle, this would be our opposite side. This one because it's always across from the right angle, will always be our hypotenuse. Therefore, we're going to be using our sine ratio. Oh, sorry. So the sine of 36 
would be A over 10. In order to manipulate this, either we can treat this as a proportion used for cross multiplication. So 1 times A is A. 10 times sine of 36 is going to be 10 multiplied by the sine of 36. Or we can multiply both sides by 10. That's going to cancel off. We're still going to be left with the same information. So either way works for you. Being able to set up a proportion is going to be one of the kind of necessary skills in this unit. By typing in my calculator, I get 5.9. Now, obviously, again, you can be specific and you say you can say units. You don't necessarily have to, at least not for me. The only extension on this is, and I didn't say it at the, be at the beginning, but make sure that your, that your calculator is in degrees. If it, does, if it doesn't say degrees and it says radians, or gradients, you're going to get a wrong answer here. For example, if I were to calculate this exact same answer in radians, I get negative 9.9. Well, hopefully you see that that really can't be a negative length. So make sure that your calculator is in degrees, not radians or gradients. Now to solve for our B, well, we have our angle. This would be our adjacent side. This is still our hypotenuse. It's still our given side, which means we're going to use cosine. So the cosine of 36 is our adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Same method, either we can set up a proportion, just multiply both sides by 10. I expect that you still show what you type into, what you are going to be typing into your calculator. So if we turn my calculator back to degrees. I get 8.1 units, whatever the unit is. Could be centimeters, meters, it'll still work out. And our last example for solving right triangles is here. So I'll call that A. Huh. So the corners are labeled differently, but doesn't really matter. That will be our B, and that'll be our unknown angle. The unknown angle, obviously, will be the easiest one to calculate. Don't forget that it's degrees, please. So if I want to solve for A, well, this side, would be the opposite. This would be the adjacent from our given angle. So the only ratio that uses the opposite and adjacent is our tangent ratio. So the tangent of 52 is going to be 12 divided by A. So again, this might be where it's going to be making more sense to treat it as a proportion. No matter what you're going to be doing, you're still multiplying both sides by A. So A multiplied by the tangent 52 would equal 12, not 15, sorry. One times 12 is 12. A times tangent 52 is A tan 52. Then we're still going to have to divide by the tangent of 52. So 12 divided by the tangent of 52, side A in this one is going to be 9.4.
absolutely include your units if you want. If it's obviously, if it's given as centimeters, you're going to have the right centimeters. And B. So in relation to the angle, this is still our opposite. This one is still going to be our hypotenuse. The only reason why, if we compare it to this first question that we did, the reason why we had to label the, this side as either opposite or the adjacent is simply for the fact that, well, we're going to be solving for a different angle, which means that this 20 is not going to be the opposite side to this green question mark. It's only the opposite to the 20. It's adjacent to the green. So because we changed which angle we're using, if by chance we use 38, yeah, this 12 would be the adjacent side. This A side would be the opposite side. The hypotenuse does not change. Right triangles, the hypotenuse does not change. Sorry, side ramps. Uh, 52, this is our upside, this is our hypotenuse. The ratio that uses opposite and hypotenuse is our sine ratio. Sine of 52, opposite over the adjacent. So I simply like multiplying both sides by the B. And then dividing by the sine 52. Green, so B would be 12 divided by the sine of 52. Which comes out 15.2 units. And there you have it. That's your nice review of how to use simple trade. Now, go have fun.